Okay, so now that we understand the labor market diagram, we need to be able to show cyclical unemployment on a diagram. And it's actually quite easy, and it brings in a lot of things that you've already seen. So we're going to revisit our aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram. And here, we're going to show a shift to the left of aggregate demand. Now, there's all sorts of reasons that that could have happened. You guys know what those are. Any change in any of the components of aggregate demand would cause that. Now, the shift in aggregate demand is going to be accompanied by a temporary fall in price level. And, obviously, we're going to produce less stuff. So, if you're, a, if you're a firm and you're producing less stuff and you're getting less money for it, Obviously, your natural reaction is going to be, how can I save money? How can I spend less? How can I cut costs? Well, if everything were a perfect market, we could see that maybe, you know, uh, the price of labor would go down or something like that. But remember, in the real world, uh, contracts are negotiated. There might be a minimum wage. There might be an agreement with the union or something like that. So what's going to happen first of all is that we're going to see a shift of aggregate demand to the left as well, the aggregate demand for labor. So that's ADL2, and that was ADL1. And, and remember, it's really important to think of, I can't just tell my workers, hey, I'm going to pay you all less. Uh, I probably have a revolt on my hand. But I also need less stuff, so I can cut hours. I can tell everybody, well, sorry, we're not selling as much stuff, so we've got to cut everybody's hours back by 10%. I can lay workers off. Um, all sorts of things like that. So what we're going to see here at the same wage level, and that's important, we're not going to see wage decrease. Okay, talk about that in a second. But at the same wage level, what we're going to see is the demand of labor is going to shift over to Q2. Okay, and this extra bit now here in green, this is our cyclical unemployment. The yellow, that was our NRU. NRU hasn't changed. We still have the same amount of people who are frictionally, seasonally, or structurally unemployed. But now we have additional unemployment that is what we see in green, and that's our cyclical unemployment. Now, sure, eventually, if this wage is flexible, if it's not a minimum wage or something like that, but if it can decrease, it will decrease down to this equilibrium you see here. And then we'll have a bigger NRU. But that's not really what we're showing right now. We're just showing the increase in cyclical unemployment. So to recap, we saw that aggregate demand shifted to the left. Employers don't need to produce as much stuff. Therefore, they don't need as many workers. That's especially true at this higher wage. So they have to lay a certain amount of people off. That increase is what we see as cyclical unemployment.